Blessed are you, Yehovah our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves in the words of the Torah. Baruch ata Yehovah Eloheinu melech halalem asher kishanu v'mitzvotav v'tzivanu lo'asak b'ndere Torah. Please, Yehovah, make the Torah's word sweet in my mouth, in the mouth of all your people, the house of Israel. May we, your children, all of Israel, know your name and the name of your Messiah, Yeshua. And may we study your Torah simply because it is good. Blessed are you, Yehovah, who gave us the Torah of truth. Baruch atah Eloheinu melech haralem asher keshanu v'mitzvotav v'tzivanu asafrat ha-omar. Blessed are you, Yehovah, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with your commandments and commanded us to count the Omer. Today is 23 days, which is three weeks and two days of the Omer. May the merciful one, okay, may he not, yes. May the merciful one restore unto us the service of the Bad Hamadash to its place speedily in our days. Amen. Selah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalms 91, everyone. Hallelujah. Are we ready? We who live in the shelter of Elyon, who spend our nights in the shadow of Shaddai, who say to Adonai, our refuge, our fortress, our God in whom we trust, he will rescue us from the trap of the hunter and from the plague of calamities. He will cover us with his pinions and under his wings we will find refuge. His truth is a shield and protection. We will not fear the terrors of night or the arrow that flies by day or the plague that roams in the dark, or the scourge that wrecks havoc at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it won't come near us. Only keep our eyes open, and we, see how, we will see how the wicked are punished. For we have made Adonai the Most High, who is our refuge, our dwelling place. No disaster will happen to us. No calamity will come near our tent. For he will order his angels to care for us and guard us wherever we go. They will carry us in their hands so that we won't trip on a stone. We will tread down lions and snakes and young lions and serpents. We will trample underfoot. And because he loves me, I will rescue him. Because he knows my name, I will protect him. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him when he is in trouble. I will extricate him and bring him honor. I will satisfy him with long life. And show him my salvation. Amen. <clears throat> Remain standing as we read from Leviticus chapter 18, 1 through 5, Job chapter 2, verse 1, Revelation chapter 3, 7. I said that we're going to start a series on the fire about revival and refreshing that's going to start after Mother's Day on the following Sabbath. Hallelujah. Adonai said to Moses, speak to the people of Israel, tell them, I am Adonai your God. You are not to engage in the activities found in the land of Egypt where you used to live, and you are not to engage in the activities found in the land of Cana where I am bringing you, nor are you to live by their laws. You are to obey my rulings and laws and live accordingly. I am Adonai your God. You are to observe my laws and rulings, and if a person does them, he will have life through them. I am Adonai. Vai daber Yahova el Moshe lemor daber el bene Israel va marta de chemani Yahova elochayar ke maase eretz Mitzrayim asher ashabtem ba lo ta asu ukma ase eretz kenaan asher ani me bi et kem shema lo ta asu ubchot chem lo te laku et mespatai ta asu ve et hu Kotai tishmeru lekem bahim ani Yahova lochayak ush martem et hu kotai ve et mishpatai asher ya ase otam ha adam ve chayam bachem ani Yahova. Joe chapter 2, verse 1. Blow the shofar in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all living in the land tremble, for the day of Adonai is coming. It's upon us. Tiku shofar bit Zion, Yikhari ubkhar hachi, Yirgzu kol oshpe charetz kiba yom Yahova ki karob. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 says, To the angel of the Messianic community in Philadelphia, write, Here is the message of Hakadosh, the true one, the one who has the key of David, who, if he opens something, no one else can shut it, and if he closes something, no one else can open it. 
ואל מלאך כפר פילדל תביעה כי טוב חו אמר חדוש חמתי אשר בידו חפתח דוד הקפתח ואין סוגר וסוגר ואיד פותח Blessed are you, Yehovah, our God, King of the universe, who gave us toward truth and everlasting life in our midst. And blessed are thou, O Yehovah, the giver of the Torah. Amen. You can be seated with a shout. If you're at home, you can be seated on your couch in your pajamas at home. <coughs> Glory to God. We're living in confusing times. And the only reason why I say confusing times is because... It is and seems like the last day. <clears throat> we have prophetic things that are happening. We have prophetic things that are being spoken. We have this message and that message and this prophet and that prophet. We have decisions. Do we sit down and let our liberties be taken from us? Do we stand up and do we fight? I mean, you can, on any given day, any given moment, <clears throat> you can have either side. People are walking out, they're crazy. People are staying in are good. People are staying in are crazy. People who are walking out. And so we have all these things that are going forth. And sometimes I just let, you know, everyone wants to be a prophet and during this day. And sometimes I just let the prophets who want to be a prophet be a prophet. Because to me, I just have to kind of let some things walk out. And there's some principles in my life that I have to make sure that I have and And if anyone knows me, I'm certainly not afraid to stand up. I, <clears throat> you know, uh, many, many, many years ago, maybe I'm telling you, you know, uh, during the Washington, D.C., I stood up against uh, the uh, abortion clinic and, yes, was handcuffed and taken away um, and, and stood my ground for some things. And so I'm not afraid to stand my ground for some things. But I, and I think that when it's time to do some things, I think that God will nudge us and move us and we need to do it. I think that we are living <coughs> in the end times. Uh, of course, Yeshua said we've been living in the end times since he has come. Correct? I do see that there's an escalation. I do see that there are some things being pushed against our uh, liberties that we need to have a voice to. We don't just roll over. We're not just, you know, one of those fainting goats. If you've ever been around a fainting goat, <coughs> all you do is say boo to them and they roll over with their <laughs> with their legs up in the air. I think that we need to take what is going on seriously. We need to pay attention to the voice of God. We need to pay attention to the spirit of God. But when I get behind the pulpit, I see so many preaching about things, and, and they're good things, and they're powerful things. I, my sister just sent me something last night that was, uh, you know, going down the line, and it was <clears throat> um, very good. I think I've posted it after her, so if you, uh, from a pastor in uh, a Baptist church somewhere, uh, it had great information about the vaccine and what's going on behind the scenes. I understand all that to be true. I understand that the enemy is out to destroy us. And I understand that we need to step up and step out and make our voice be heard. But this sermon in Empowering Yourself has nothing really, <clears throat> even though it does, has nothing to do with that because it has everything to do with an internal principles that need to be in operation or you won't be able to do it when it's necessary you won't be able to stand because you will have been engulfed by everything that's around you and you will be struggling <clears throat> with fear and faith and never be able to really step out and speak truth so we have some scriptures revelation 3 7 we we wrote we We start out with Leviticus, which is our Torah portion, which we know says that no matter what the laws are, no matter what they're engaging in in this society, we, we're not part of that. So that's where it starts, isn't it? Being different than everyone else. Correct? And then we have that Revelation 3, 7 to the, angel, to the Messianic community in Philadelphia. He says he has the key of David. And if you listen last week, I talked about the keys. Right? So we're going to take those keys and bring them today because in order for you to empower yourself, you have to know the keys that you have and you have to learn to use them. Then we have Revelation 22, 16 that says, I, Yeshua, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the Messianic communities. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. How many can say amen? Because that's who we follow and that's who we serve. And you can't follow or serve anyone greater than him. Your trust and faith can be in him, right? 
<clears throat> Acts 13, 22 says, God removed him, raised up David as king for them, making his approval known with these words. I found David ben Yisha to be a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want. Because he's a man looking for, relentlessly going after God's heart. <clears throat> I could close my book. Put my notes away and say, the key to empowerment is that you seek him with all your heart. But I have more. Some more verses we read and that uh, <clears throat> I'm going to add is, um, do I have them? Is Matthew 24, 3 through 14. Don't get nervous. But it says, when he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the Talmudim came to him privately telling him or telling them, when will we see these things happen? Talking about the last day. And what will be the sign that you are coming and that the Alam Haseth is ending? This world is ending. Yeshua replied, watch out. These, these are words you need to live by today. Watch out. Don't let anyone fool you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah. They will lead many astray. You will hear the noise of wars nearby and the news of wars far off. See to it that you don't become, say it, <clears throat> frightened. Such things must happen, but the end is yet to come. So even though our voice needs to be heard, such things must happen. Don't be frightened. For peoples will fight each other. Nations will fight each other. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various parts of the world. All this is but the beginning of the birth pains. And at that time, you will be arrested and handed over to be punished and put to death. And all peoples will hate you because of me. Don't focus on nine, but don't skip nine. Nine is still attached to the one above that says, don't be frightened. These things must happen. At that time, many will be trapped into betraying and hating each other. Can we not see that even today? People are calling. <clears throat> many false prophets will appear and fool many people. Many people's love will grow cold because of the increased distance from Torah. For whoever holds out to the end will be delivered. In this day and age of social distancing, please do not social distance yourself from the word of Yehoah. Please don't do that. You might protect yourself giving six feet. You might protect yourself in all sorts of ways. And that is all good and all well and good. But here's the thing. <clears throat> don't social distance yourself from God because he's the only one that's protecting you. That mask can fail. <clears throat> Your social distance can fail. Come on. But he won't. His word won't. Sometimes we're so focused on the fear and the avenue and is he coming and is he not coming? Is this the last day and is it not the last day? We forget to pull close to him. We're too busy watching the signs <clears throat> to go to the one who creates that sign. After And this good news about the kingdom will be announced throughout the whole world as a witness to all the goyim. It is then that the end will come. Are we there yet? No. Are we getting there? Slowly but surely. We're rowing a boat. Right? The next scriptures that I have, and then we'll jump on this, <clears throat> Acts 2, 17 to 21. Adonai says, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon everyone. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. That's where I'm at, I guess. Even on my slaves, both men and women, will I pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will perform miracles on the sky above, signs on the earth below, blood and fire and thick smoke. Some will become dark, the moon blood, before the great and fearful day of Adonai comes. And then whoever calls on the name of Adonai will be saved. What we can see about that, and which we will start to talk about in two weeks, is that there will be an outpouring of the Spirit of God beyond that we can even imagine in this last day. Are we there yet? No. Are we getting there? Slowly we're rowing a boat. Slowly we're rowing a boat. Some more scripture, I believe. <clears throat> On Joel chapter 115. Oh no, the day. The day of Adonai is upon us as destruction from Shaddai. It is coming. And we learned on Wednesday what Shaddai means, right? Divine warrior. And at the same time, a divine protector. So he's going forth as a warrior, and at the same time, he is protecting those that are with him. Can't beat it. 
Joel 2, 1, 2. Did I read that? La last part. A day of darkness. I, oh, I read that one. I'll leave glory to God. Why did, if we go back to Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, Revelation 22, 16, but actually verse 7, why did Jehovah call David a man after his own heart? Why did the Messiah testify to the Ecclesia of Philadelphia that he has the key to David? We've done a study on the tabernacle of Moses, the tabernacle of, <coughs> of Solomon, and the tabernacle of David. And what we realized is the tabernacle of David had everything stripped from it except the glory. Right? And so we also know that the key of David, when we look at it, <coughs> that he's writing to the church of Philadelphia is there is an act of obedience to the word of Jehovah. If we see anything, if anything happens in this <coughs> scenario, difficult time, may it drive you to be obedient to the word of God, because that is where your safety is. That is where security is. That is where your health is. That is where your wholeness is. That is where your warrior is. That is where your protector is to the word of God. So a key is critical in opening and closing the door. We talked about that. You can lock it or unlock it. You can let someone in or not let someone in. <clears throat> and so if Yeshua has it, it must be important. And as it was important, he gave it to Peter, which is a symbolism of giving it to all to us. So we have to have the understanding of that key like we had last week. And we have to understand it even more this week and because the bible is the word of Jehovah, how many believe that then the last book in the bible must be important in revealing the complete plan of Jehovah. correct you can read a nice book but really the last chapter and the last pages is the most important <clears throat> if you rip them out you're going to be frustrated because you don't know how it ends right I'm so thankful that God didn't rip it out. I'm so thankful that even though I don't know what happens tomorrow, I know what happens when he comes. Right? So if the last book is important, then that means that the last few verses must be important also. So if we look at Revelation 22, 16 through 21, very quickly, <clears throat> the scripture says, I, Yeshua, have sent my angel to you to give this testament in the Messianic communities. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star. We read that. The spirit and the bride say... Come, let everyone who hears say, come, and let anyone who is thirsty, come, let anyone who wishes take the water of life free of charge. <clears throat> we can zone that in, we can be happy about that, we can dance about that, but what's the next verse start with? I warn you, everyone, I warn everyone, hearing the words of this prophecy in this book, that if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words in this book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and the holy city as described in this book. So the one is testifying, the one who is testifying to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Yeshua. May the grace of the Lord Yeshua be with you all. <clears throat> Obedience and taking the word at face value and whatever it says we do. Easy. What will be then the signs of this end time? The signs of the end time will be that the Torah will prepare the bride before Yeshua comes. There has to be a return of Torah before Yeshua comes. And we see it. We see it in our own church, right? We saw it many years ago. I don't even know how many years now we've been walking in Torah, but it's been many at least over, what, almost 15? <clears throat> About 15? About 13 years. So we, we have been following Torah for 13 years. Seems like we've been following Torah forever, right? But we've been following Torah for 13 years. And so that means that we're going to see a turn of people coming back to Torah. And we've seen it. We, we understand it. It's going out through the world. But it's still going to be increased because the more that the enemy comes against us, the more that we get into the word of God, the more that we try to figure out that word of God, draw that word of God to us, the more the word of God will be enlightened to us. See, the Ruach 
will awaken the church. And I believe that even though this is a moment where the church can be awakened, I'm sad to say I think it's not awakening them to the knowledge of Yehovah. It's awakening them to the knowledge of their liberties or political stance or which side are you on? Are you red? Are you blue? Are you this? Are you that? <clears throat> but there needs to be an awakening to the knowledge and understanding of the word of Yehovah. And for some, it is. But not in the outpouring that I believe will happen during that last day. He's going to raise up an army who will love Yehovah with all their heart, all their mind, and all their strength. I appreciate those who are making stands. I appreciate those who are in protest, if you want to say it that way. I appreciate that some are <clears throat> taking it and making sure that they're safe. Some are not, uh, whatever. I appreciate their stance. My, my point is, uh, what I find to be very interesting, and this is not anything on you all or even myself, I find it to be interesting that the world knows how to make a stand more than the church knows how to make a stand. Where is more the outrage of <clears throat> why an abortion clinic is open and a church is not? Why a liquor store is open and a church is not? And I, again, I'm not saying let's all get tanks and run over the Capitol. But what I'm saying is, is there at least a voice? Has a letter been sent? Is there, is there something that's been done? Uh, do you have something that, that you are outraged that you have been asked to refrain? Now, again, if you've chosen to do that on your own, that's wonderful. But you can social distance. Again, I'm not trying to be political. All I'm trying to say is, where's the voice of the men and women of Yehovah? What has become more important to us? In Matthew 25, it, verses 1 through 13, it talks about ten virgins. Five are what? Five are? You know the story. And the five wise get in, the five foolish don't. <clears throat> we know in Revelation chapter 3, 14 through 22, without reading it and, uh, and, and making the sermon longer, we know that there are lukewarm. He'd rather you be hot or cold, but lukewarmness. Gives you no extra oomph. Let me hear. If we put your hand in hot water, you know it. I didn't heed the wisdom of my wife. You know, I jammed my finger the other day. I was downstairs, and <clears throat> the light is on the other side, so I hit the light off, and, and I uh, tripped over something, so I stuck out my hand and just jammed my finger. I was like, man, that hurt. And I knew who put that there. It was Isaiah. So then I was really asking the Lord to help Isaiah. And <clears throat> it was jammed and it sw swole up. And it actually, it's still swollen because it has not even yet gone down. It's been almost three weeks. And it hurts. And the other day, it was hurting so bad, I said, Gail, give me some ice. Do we have one of those little things? You know, there's a little teddy bear ice thing you put in for little children. And I can wrap it around my little finger. You know, because as a man, you just suck up and you move through it. But that day, I just wasn't feeling like I wanted to suck up. I just wanted, I wanted some ice on it. So Gail said, you want me to wrap it in some cloth? And I said, no. Nah. So she brought it. It was coming right out of the freezer, and I put it on my finger. And then I was trying to figure out, why is my finger hurting so bad with ice? Because I was burning my finger with ice. <laughs> I said, and I went to the kitchen and run hot water. I said, I think I burned my finger in Gail. I, that's why I asked you if you wanted it to be wrapped. I said, yes, please wrap it. Because cold can do something. <coughs> hot can do something. Lukewarm doesn't do nothing. Except give you a sense of, oh, that's nice. History awaits the witness of the Kahila. History awaits for us to be awakened and to be the witness. I'm not talking about crazy witness. I'm talking about truth witness. See, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, <clears throat> and this is what we know. We already know the signs. He says, watch out. But we already know that don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for the day will not come until after the apostasy has come, and the man who separates himself from, say it, Torah has been revealed, the one destined for doom. That means the Antichrist, or whether it's a system, will separate itself from Torah. It doesn't have to necessarily be a man. It can be a system. 
And it's going to separate itself from Torah, which means it's going to <clears throat> tell you that Torah is wrong and you shouldn't do it. And now God has been turning us back to Torah. So that means we're going to be in direct conflict with an antichrist who says the Torah is wrong. Well, we even have it today where they're telling us as Christians that we are ridiculous, that our stand and our belief system and what we stand for is ridiculous. And they're attaching it somewhat to a, a party or to a man. But really, the word of God is the word of God. And there's going to be a falling away from that faith by many in this end time drama. <clears throat> and I'm sad to say before an outpouring that's going to sweep across this nation, there's going to have to be a weeding out. A weeding out. Matthew 24, verse 13 says, whoever holds out to the end <clears throat> shall be saved or delivered. But whoever holds out to the end will be delivered. That means there is a lot of space between beginning and end. Right? So our response is that we need to be empowered to do his work. However, in the cooperation with the Ruach, we must prepare ourselves or empower ourselves to get ready for his fullness. Anyone who's going to run a race has to prepare themselves. I don't want you to get the title of a doctor without preparing yourself. If you say I'm a plumber, but I can fix your finger. No, that's OK. When my pipe is leaking, I'll call you right now. I need someone who knows the ins and outs of a finger. Because it hurts. So how do we do that? <clears throat> well, here's the key. We have to align our words. With Yehovah's words. You can't change your past, but you can change your future. And if you grab hold of the principles that I'm going to give you, just three, very three simple principles. You already know them. I'm just here to remind you of them. Right. If we grab hold of these three principles given to us in this sermon, then your whole life will change forever starting today. So are you ready? Because what I've noticed is the greatest enemy <clears throat> is the words coming to us. You know, the virus um, can or cannot attack you. It can you can go through it or you don't have to go through it or you can survive through it or actually can take you. <clears throat> we do know that the the um, the rate of uh, mortality is that the right word I want to use of life is great. Ninety eight. Maybe nine nine point uh, it just came out that the death rate is point zero 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 six. So we know that you can survive this. But here's the thing. <clears throat> there are things spiritually. That you need to grab a hold of or you won't survive because those things attach to you. You know, everyone's been through something. Everyone's had a a. Uh, 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 a collision with something. Someone's been abused. Someone's been hurt. And, you know, that passes. But something lingers. Right. Yeah, you could have been abused 20 years ago, which means the act of it happened 20 years ago, but you're still carrying it. So there's something more to it. And what we need to know, there's something more to what's going on because it's there to threaten us. It's there to paralyze us as a uh, as a, a body of believers. It's there to paralyze us as the voice and witness of the church. It's there to paralyze us not to run to him or to follow the word of God. Three principles. Are you ready? Very simple principles. Number one, <clears throat> you. Have to exchange your negative words for positive words. It's so easy to be negative. So easy to speak what you've been. Spoken to what you read, what someone else is saying. <clears throat> exchange your negative words for. Positive. I can't change your words, but I can change mine. You have creative spiritual force at work in the words that you speak. When Jehovah created the world, he simply spoke and the world was formed. 
The changing of anything, the changing of your future as opposed to your past, because you can't go and speak to your past and it will change. It is established. It is there. It is done. But you can look at your present and then speak into your future. And as you begin to <clears throat> exchange your negative words, and if we can just acknowledge wherever you are, here or there, you have negative words. We, we can't allow those negative words to come out of our mouth. We need to exchange those negative words for positive words. That same spiritual creative power that God or Yeshua did at, at the very beginning of creation lies in the words you speak. Yaakov 3, 5, what does it say? So, too, the tongue is a tiny part of the body, yet it boasts great things. <clears throat> See how a little fire sets a whole forest ablaze. What's your forest inside of you? <clears throat> your mental, your physical, your financial, right? All these systems that are in your body, right? <clears throat> Can be set ablaze by the one little member that's been given to you to keep everything in line. Speaking to yourselves and psalms and hymns, renewing your mind, right? <clears throat> All those things have to do with your words. What are you saying? I'm so tired, I feel like I'm going to die. Oh, that's just saying it. I understand that's just saying it. But you respond to it by then collapsing. Right? I'm not saying that you can't acknowledge that you're tired. Right? But your words, we must understand, your words have spiritual power. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. You either believe the word of God or you don't believe the word of God. You either believe it out of uh, <clears throat> when it suits you, and when it doesn't suit you, you don't believe it. But it is true. So if life and death are in the power of the tongue, then what do we need to learn to control? Our tongue. Our words are evidence of our faith. So the Bible tells us to guard our mouths. I'll say that again. Our words are evidence of our faith. Out of the heart, the mouth will speak. <clears throat> so it's giving evidence of where you're at. He who endures to the end shall be saved. See, the main reason that people don't fulfill Jehovah's destiny is that they dwell on and speak things that are contrary to the promises and plans of Jehovah. Listen, we're experiencing a virus, <clears throat> but by stripes I am healed. Psalms 91, greater is he that is in me. That's not Psalms 91, but I'm saying Psalms 91. And then also, greater is he that is in me. I need to exchange my negative words, right, with positive words. And when I mean by positive words, I mean the words of Yehoah. See, we are to be people who walk in victory, whose words reflect Jehovah's purposes in us. We shall overcome. We shall endure to the end. We shall live and not die. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 8, <clears throat> when they were coming out, um, I don't know if I have. Yes, I do. I have come down to rescue them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that country to be to a good and spacious land, a land, excuse me, flowing with milk and honey. <clears throat> Why is Jehovah rescuing them? To bring them out. What is God doing with us? Bring us out. The plan has always been to bring us out. <clears throat> Let me go back to Leviticus, the first one that we read during the Torah portion. I'm taking you, listen, I'm, I'm removing you from a land <clears throat> that is crazy, demonic. So don't do them. Don't do anything they do. I'm even taking you to a land that has crazy people. Don't follow them. Don't do them. So I'm letting you know <clears throat> that where you came from had crazy people. Now where you're going has crazy people. Where you came from had crazy laws, rules. Where you're going to has crazy laws and rules. But let you know this. I'm bringing you out that you might serve me. 
and follow my laws and my rulings. What does that tell you? That tells you that no matter where you're at among craziness, you yourself can still be what he wants you to be. No matter where you're at, <clears throat> when there is this law and that law, you yourself can obey the law of Yehovah, and he will give you the strength. But you have to exchange your negative words for positive words. Now, if you look at Exodus chapter 3, verse 8, you'll recognize something. The only thing he gives them is that I'm taking you to a good and spacious land flowing with milk and honey. He never said it would be easy. He never said that it would be no battles. And he never said that there would be no giants. Because what does God already know? It won't be easy. We're going to have to fight. And wait till you see them giants. But here's what he said. I will get you to the promised land and give it to you. He who endures to the end shall be saved. So we can praise him when everything is good. That's good for us. We can do that. But what about when obstacles come? When trials come? When tribulation comes? Can we still praise him? It's easy to say that we can. <clears throat> but there will be a witness. And if you don't learn to exchange your negative words to your positive words, you'll never be able to fight it. Because they came out of Egypt dancing, singing, and rejoicing. Correct? <clears throat> I mean, miracle after miracle. Singing and dancing at the other side of the Red Sea. Woo, glory. But the Red Sea and after the Red Sea, what happens to them? Panic. Unbelief. Doubt. But yet still, Jehovah delivered them. How exciting it must have been to leave Egypt with everyone's gold and silver. I mean, not just leave, but got some gold and silver from your neighbor. <laughs> Thank you, neighbor. See you later. Now, I do know you have some more coins. Can you get them for ease, please? <clears throat> but when they get to that Red Sea, man, they panic. When they get across the Red Sea, dance and shouting, but then they start to. When they got to the Red Sea, what did they say? We're going to die. When they crossed the Red Sea and needed water, what'd they say? We're going to die. When they needed food, what'd they say? We're going to die. Every time they said it, they were saying, we don't believe Yehovah. Be careful of your words because they speak greater volumes than you know. It's not just speaking what you see. It's speaking that you're telling him he's not great enough. Sent 12 spies in, 12 went in, 12 went out, two that came out said we can, 10 that came out said we can't. Listen, Jehovah is no respecter of persons. He doesn't choose people to win and others to, to, to kind of lose. All 12 spies that went in should have came back with a good report. Because all 12 saw the same thing. Saw the same plague, saw the same deliverance, saw the same Red Sea parting, saw the same devouring of the Egyptians, saw the same thing when they needed water, it came out of a rock, saw the same thing when they needed food, it fell from heaven. All 12 saw the same thing. All of them were led by the same spirit. All of them understood and heard the same word of Yehovah. All of them <clears throat> were still being, being led by the same prophet, teacher, Messiah Moses. So what does that mean? That means then it's up to you. You can either be part of the two or you can be part of the ten. So what we have to do is we have to put a guard on our mouths. When I take uh, Malek to the vet, I don't understand why. They want a muzzle on him. He's a beautiful little puppy who just wants love. Not that he happens to stand very tall and has big teeth, but. And took him the other weekend. They wanted a muzzle on him because they wanted to do something, and he wasn't having it. 
even from me. I tried to go in underneath. He looked up. I tried to go to the side. He looked away. I tried to rub it with him. Oh. Mm. Everywhere I went, he moved, 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 moved. And his pupils get bigger and bigger, which means, okay, I'm done. I can't guard your mouth. You're the only one who can do that. Stop speaking death. Start speaking life because he who endures to the end shall be saved. Stop letting the enemy control your thoughts about you. Speak the word. And if it means during this crisis <coughs> that you need to read more of the word and not listen to more of the news, turn it off. And when you recognize something that's not wrong, then speak up the truth. Speak up the word of the Lord. So number one, we have to exchange our negative words for our negative, uh, for positive words. And number two, very quickly, you have to exchange your negative thoughts for positive thoughts. Because there's a lot of stuff that happens in between those two ears. And you have to realize this. And the reason why you have to bring those every thought into captivity is because your thoughts are the beginning of your destiny. Where we end in life is determined by how we start. If you sow a thought, you reap an act. If you sow an act, you reap a habit. If you sow a habit, you reap a destiny. What did they say? What did Yeshua say to the to the brother? <clears throat> You still have time because that seed that's in you, if you get rid of it, it won't come to fruit. It won't come to your destiny. But if you don't, it's going to kill your brother. And when it kills your brother, it's going to kill you. The enemy's at your door knocking. Exchange your negative thoughts for positive thoughts. Because all actions begin with a thought. Which becomes then the blueprint for our own lives. Proverbs 23, 7 says, whatever a man thinketh, so he is. <clears throat> so the outcome of our lives has less to do with outside circumstances than it has to do with our thinking. It will rain on the just and unjust. We, listen, we, we've been studying Job. Good study. We've been studying. If you, if you can't be here or if you can't <clears throat> get it, Go back when it's on YouTube. It's a good study. And all that we've decided to say is we don't want to be like Job. And that he went through. We would like to be like Job and that he held on to his integrity. We'd be like, we would like to be like Job that he persevered and, and endured. But we don't want to have to be tested like Job. But the outcome of our lives has less to do with our outward situation than what we are thinking. And we see that in Job. No matter what was happening outside, he still maintained integrity. Why? Because his thinking, he was doing some changing of thinking. Has anyone ever gone through something? And what's the first thing that explodes? Not your mouth, but your brain. It just starts thinking. Tap, 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 tap. Boom, 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 boom. Can't get rid of it. You get in the car, it's still there. Go to sleep, it's still there. Get up in the morning, it's still there. And if you say, I'm not saying nothing anymore, I'm not saying anything, I wish you could just say, I'm not thinking anything anymore. Because that never happens. So we have to learn to exchange those negatives with those positive. We have to learn to control our future. And to control our future is actually to control your thinking. What does Joshua 1.8 say? Meditate on the Word of God when? You know why he think, thinks you need to meditate day and night? Because your thoughts are continual. He tells us not to let his word depart from your mouth, to meditate it day and night. That means it's going to take some work. You have to guard your mind. Whatever you allow to be planted in your spirit will produce a harvest. I'm saying things that you already know. But I'm saying it at a time when you need to hear him again because of the influx of so much stuff that is changing our thinking, changing our words, 
and changing how we're acting. Guard your mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. <clears throat> and every arrogance that raises itself against the knowledge of God, we take every thought captive and make it obey the Messiah. We need to bring down those things. Every arrogance. It is believing Yehovah and his word to the point that it changes who we are and how we live. Do you believe me? Now, I'm not a hunter. I imagine you could see that. Some people in here are hunters. But let me give you an example of what that means. That means when it's hunting season, <clears throat> I pray that you're not the hunter that goes out and shoots in the middle of the forest, hoping that an animal will pass by and run into your bullet. That's how we are sometimes. A hunter has to go out and decide, has to focus, has to wait. <clears throat> and when that animal comes focused and is a good shot, then shoots. But not a good hunter is someone who goes out and just shoots and hopes that an animal falls down. So you have to decide every day not to focus on problems. <clears throat> you have to focus every day. I am going to focus on the solution, not the problem. And when the enemy brings that problem, you have to say, no, I have to focus on the solution. I, I just remembered the other day, because I'm <clears throat> in the middle of a fast right now, and I remember when I first was in... Um, had my first church, um, I decided to do a 40 day fast. And I, you know, I wasn't, uh, it was more primitive in those days. Uh, what I mean by primitive is that I had a little small little room. Uh, it was a small church and I took construction paper and I wrote verses down like no weapon formed against me shall prosper and all. I mean, I just wrote them. And <clears throat> as if you've ever been to my office, it's very nice. But, you know, so then I took scotch tape and I put them all on my walls. Which today, if you came in and said, what are you doing? But I was young. I was just in my 20s. My first church, right? And I knew that what I needed to do in order, because I didn't know anything, <clears throat> I'm young, is that when I went in my office and I prayed, I would pray my wall. I'd start. And I'd pray my wall. And I've told you the story that after those 40 days, my church tripled. And the Spirit of God fell on me, and people were being healed and delivered. And the thing is, what I, what I now realize, and kind of realize then, I imagine, is that I decided to focus on the solution and not the problem. Because the problem I had was that I was given a church of six people, 70 years old and more. So what I was doing, I was focusing. I was Cha exchanging my words and exchanging my thoughts. You can't help when you pray the word of God for it to change you. Whether it's flashcards or something, just verse after verse in your pocketbook, in your pocket, that when the enemy comes, you pull it out and you just start praying that word of God over your life. You just start exchanging those negatives for positives and exchanging those negative thoughts for positive words until that passes. And when it passes, put it back. Then go on. <clears throat> if it comes again, pull it out and do it and do it. You have to decide every day not to focus on our problems but the solutions. Because he who endures to the end shall be saved. So we exchange our negative words for positive words. We exchange our negative thoughts for positive thoughts. And the last one, <clears throat> as I close, is that we have to exchange our negative actions for positive actions. Now, you do know that all three are linked. Having this desire to change and the understanding to change and having the faith to change doesn't accomplish anything. I've been around people, oh, I want to change. I still want to change, Pastor. <laughs> do you know how to change? I do. I know. I know. I, I know what I need to do. I need to read this. I need to do that. Uh, do you believe? I believe that I can do it. None of those three bring change. The only thing that brings you change is when you do something to change. Because faith without works is dead. And I'm sure you've been frustrated with yourself because you know better. You know what to do. And you know who to trust in. The thing is, you're just not doing it right now. And I wish the other three would make you change. 
but they don't. Because we have to be co-laborers with Yeshua. I'm so thankful that he made us people of choice, that we might love him because we want to, not because we have to. And at the same time, <clears throat> though he has made us that type of creatures, he's also made us that type of creatures and that we have to work with him. He does his part. And we do our part. Very quickly, just to understand that Goliath didn't fall until David did what? Picked up a stone and threw it. You have to understand that the gold coins didn't appear until Peter went fishing for the taxes. We also have to know that water didn't come out of the rock until Moses spoke to that rock. We know that Jericho didn't fall until the Israelites marched around seven times. And we know that Peter didn't walk on water until he got out of the boat. And we have these examples over and over and over and over again. The children of Israel were not rescued until Esther went into the king's throne. God gives us example after example after example. I want to. I know how to. I have faith that I can. Doesn't do any good till you do it. So do you see the pattern? Faith requires action. Yehoah does his part. You do yours because he who endures to the end shall be saved. It is a continual process. Are we in crisis? Are our liberties being taken? <clears throat> do we need to make stands? All those things are yes and yes and yes and amen. And we have to be aware of what God wants us to do. We have to learn to be able to speak up and stand up when we're supposed to. We have to be aware and have wisdom and knowledge. We can protect ourselves and do all sorts of things. But here's the thing. If we're not careful, when it's really time for it to matter, we won't be able to do it because we are paralyzed by our words and our thoughts and our actions. I want you to not be discouraged because if you just go to the end of the book, we win the war. Now, I'm not saying you won't die in the middle of it, but you still will win it. Right? And I get it. It's not easy to change your life. Right? Because the changes we need to make for our lives need to be transformed or radical. We've been such in the status quo for so long. See, some of you, <clears throat> you know what it is to be on fire for God, and you know what it is to be cold. You also know what it is to be lukewarm. And you know that if sitting here or, or at home and you're watching, <clears throat> and you know, oh, man, I really need to make a change in my life. I really need to be getting... On, on, more on fire, I need to have this in my life. You know that is hard to do because wherever you have placed yourself, it might take a radical transformation. Listen, if I stood before you 700 pounds, I'm not going to be my ideal weight by next week. Right? It will take a little just a little time and a little effort about a week. No, it will take a lifestyle change, which is where we always get stuck because we enjoy where we've arrived, we like where we are, and if God is calling us to a radical change, then we have to change our thoughts and our words and our actions. If all hell broke loose, three-fourths of the church would not be ready for what's coming after them. It would fold like anything. Throw up your hands, I give up. We see it already. There has to be an army that when the wave of the enemy comes, doesn't run, doesn't shrink back, stands strong. Whose thoughts are the thoughts of God, whose words are the words of Jehovah, and whose actions are motivated by the spirit of a living God.
Change can be difficult, and it's not always comfortable, but it is necessary. Changes need to be made because we are living in the last days so that we all can say, He who endures to the end shall be saved. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's stand before Jehovah <coughs> and receive the priestly blessing. As soon as our priest comes. <clears throat> Don't forget, men, uh, download the Zoom call or tell Pastor Kenny how we can get a touch, uh, tat in touch with you to let you know when a meeting would be <coughs> and by the disciples of a godly man by R. Kent Hughes and then women uh, please after the service next week uh, if you're home be here by 2 p.m. in the cars at that parking lot so we can give you um, a gift and love on you for a minute hallelujah hallelujah <coughs> Yehovah, he who exists, now before you're presenting gifts, and will guard you with a hedge of protection. Yehovah, he who exists, will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards you, bringing order, and he will provide you with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yehovah, he who exists, will lift up wholeness of being, look upon you. He will set in place all you need to be, whole and complete. May Yehovah grant all the desires of our hearts, fulfill all our purposes and all our petitions. May Yehovah, hear from heaven, quickly answer all our requests. Save us in the day of adversity. And in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, defend us from our enemies, from poverty, and from bondage. Shabbat Shalom. Do we have the bread and juice? Hallelujah. Just remain as we get some bread and juice. All, all you in line of Jew to one, line of Jew to two, and watching us, Shabbat Shalom. God bless you all. <laughs>